All right, now we're going to talk about searching databases effectively. So there are multiple tips here that we're going to talk about of ways I think make you the most efficient and effective database user. So the first one I want to talk about is this one. Do not use full sentences when you're searching in databases. Less is more in this case. So what I mean by this is in Google, you can search a full sentence and I'll know exactly what you're talking about. Scholarly and research databases do not work that way. You really need to be able to narrow down your topic to only the main points. Okay, so what are the points we care about? What specifically are those words? I have an example here. So let's say your topic is, in infants born prematurely, compared to those born at full term, what is the subsequent lifetime prevalence of hearing problems? So a lot of words there, some important ones, but there underneath I had the main concept, which is infant, premature, and hearing problems. Out of that full sentence, those are my three main concepts, and those are the concepts and the words I will type into a database, not effects of over time, changes, lifetime prevalence. None of those words really mean anything. So these are my core concepts. Okay? The next tip I have is to think of synonyms for your main concepts. Unfortunately, we do not all speak the same way or mean the same things when we use the same words, which is kind of counterintuitive. But what I mean by this is if I want to search the database for the word infant, I may also want to consider the word baby, newborn, you know, zero to six months. There's a lot of different terminology and synonyms I could use. This comes handy when you do a search and you do not get relevant results or any results. Maybe you need to change the wording to find more relevant results. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but I want to get this in the back of your mind before we dive in. The next tip I want to talk to you about is utilizing Boolean search terms in your search strategy. And we're going to go over this next as well. Boolean search terms are and, or, or not. So in this case, for this topic, it would be infant and premature and hearing problems. And now I was talking to you about synonyms. So let's say infant or newborn and premature and hearing problems or deafness, for example. Okay? Again, we'll talk about this shortly. The next tip we're going to talk about is to start broad and work your way to more specific. So again, less is more. Just give me the details and don't always try to go for the gold right off the bat. That is a very easy way to miss a lot of relevant information. So just start with the basics and slowly whittle your way down. Next, understand how your database works. Different databases work in different ways. Unfortunate but true. PubMed has different tools and understandings than CINAHL and vice versa. So how does it operate? How will it interpret your language? And again, we'll talk about this when I demo um, a database for you and a search strategy. But think about that. You know, you kind of have to play the game a little bit. And finally, utilize the search filters. In many of the databases, there'll be an option to limit to scholarly and peer review articles, like I showed you in Articles Plus. But also, like in PubMed and CINAHL, you can narrow to a specific type of research, like a clinical trial or a systematic review, um, a publication date. If you're looking for something recent or if you're really focused on evidence-based practice, five years or less. You know, I don't want something from the 90s if I'm talking about a current issue, necessarily. So think about that. There's a lot of filters to make your lives easier. Okay, next I want to talk to you about Boolean search terms. Um, so I was talking to you about this a little bit before, and the, you use these when you communicate to databases. So you have your main concepts, but how do you plug them into the database to be the most efficient? So let's talk about cats and dogs first, this first one. Okay, so you use and when you want to include both of those concepts. So both cats and dogs must be included in my resource. I don't want an article about cats and birds or just cats. It must be cats and dogs. 
okay? This is a great tool if you want to get less results or rather more specific. So with and, I'm telling the database exactly what I want, cats and dogs, telling it right off the bat. So that gives me less results, but hypothetically more specific, okay? Then there's not. I don't like not, and I don't think you should use it because it limits your results in a way that you cannot control. So I type into the database, cats, not dogs. I'm telling the database to search for articles, books, whatever materials, so let's say articles, to include the word cats, but not dogs. Okay, so why not just not include the word dogs? Okay, and why this is really limiting in a bad way is let's say there's an author with the last name Dogs, and that author, Dogs, is a feline behavior specialist. This is actually a true story, you can Google it. There is a professional out there with the last name Dogs, and they're a feline specialist, feline behavior specialist. So everything you'd ever wanna know about cats by this author dogs, you're eliminating because you're telling the article or you're telling the database to not search for the word dogs. That could be the author's last name in the title, in the text, in the abstract, the publication location. You know, it could be a variety of fields of the record. So just don't do it. The next thing is or. Or means more. So with and, we get more specific but less results. With or, we get more results. So this is great if you're looking to include, you know, some synonyms or if you're giving the database more wiggle room. So cats or dogs, one or the other, you know, both of them, it doesn't matter as long as it's some sort of pet, okay? Or let's say when I was talking to you about infants, newborn, baby, so forth. So you type into a database and you're not getting any results. or You're not getting anything relevant. You're not getting very many. That's when you want to include or. So cats or feline or kitten or kittens. You get the idea. 